I'm Charles Wilson, Senior Principal Engineer at Motional, responsible for cybersecurity development lifecycle practice. This presentation will cover the Autonomous Vehicle Cybersecurity Manufacturer's Disclosure Statement, or AVC MDS. This diagram shows the overall AVCDL supply chain training path. If you're taking this training, it's assumed that you've already completed the supply chain overview training. This training covers the Manufacturer's Disclosure Statement, or AVC MDS. Additional trainings will cover Supplier Cybersecurity Maturity, Vendor Cybersecurity Process to AVCDL Mapping, Cybersecurity Requirements, Tailoring the Cybersecurity Interface Agreement, Service Level Agreements, SLAs, Software Bill of Materials, SBOMs, Attack Surface Analysis, and Threat Modeling. Here's an image of sailors taking part in a battleship tournament on a battleship. Just imagine if you were playing, knew all the rules, but weren't allowed to see where your ships were. That's the situation we're in without the AVC MDS. When we consider the title of this training, Autonomous Vehicle Cybersecurity Manufacturer Disclosure Statement, two things should come to mind. One, what is a manufacturer's disclosure statement? And two, what does it have to do with cybersecurity? The answer to the first question is straightforward. A manufacturer disclosure statement is a description of the materials, sources, storage, and application procedures for a product from a manufacturer. The use of a manufacturer disclosure statement goes back thousands of years. The second is a more difficult question. What does a manufacturer disclosure statement have to do with cybersecurity? For that, we have to look at how we treat suppliers in an automotive context with respect to cybersecurity in general. Until very recently, the responsibility for cybersecurity has fallen upon the OEMs directly. Suppliers would only provide a functional device, component, or piece of software. This would be integrated up through the various tiers, and when it reached the OEM, they would be responsible for any cybersecurity controls necessary in order to satisfy their cybersecurity requirements. This works until it doesn't. UN ECE R155, which is in force in all of Europe and various countries throughout the world, requires that cybersecurity exist not only as a responsibility of the OEM, but also throughout the supply chain. This recognizes the complexity of today's computer-based systems within the vehicle. Because there was no requirement for cybersecurity controls at the vendor level, there was no need to have a way to determine what controls were being put in place within the supplier's organization. Without information that tells us that a supplier is doing certain things in a cybersecurity context, we have to assume that they're doing nothing. Because of that, we're limited in terms of the type of analysis we can perform on components provided by suppliers to ensure that cybersecurity controls are in place. One tool we have is the attack surface analysis, but the information provided by an attack surface analysis is limited. We could also do penetration testing, but we run into the same type of problem. We're doing an analysis after the fact. We're not looking at the controls we've put in place by default and what good behaviors are being used by the company. A more fundamental problem is that even though we have attack surface analysis and penetration testing at our disposal, these are happening at the wrong point in time. We've already selected the vendor and we've already received the component in some cases. What we'd like to be able to do is incorporate an instrument at the RFI stage of supplier selection so we're able to weigh the cybersecurity controls that one vendor has over another. This allows us to estimate the amount of work we're going to have to put in if it's determined that the functionality that a particular vendor provides outweighs the other vendor selection factors. 
The AVC MDS is a manufacturer's disclosure statement that's specifically tailored to provide the kinds of information that we need to know in order to make determinations of this very sort. It's based on an existing model that's used within the medical industry known as the MDS-2, the Manufacturer's Disclosure Statement for Medical Device Security. Much of the information is in common with that particular instrument. The AVC MDS is not intended as a be-all and end-all, but as a survey of capabilities enabling apples-to-apples -apples comparisons between vendors. We use it to determine the resources that are going to be necessary to ensure that we have the level of cybersecurity needed to maintain the safe operation of the vehicle. Here we can see how various documents key to supply chain cybersecurity relate and where in the supply selection process they live. We can see that the AVC MDS is a precursor to the creation of the tailored cybersecurity requirements and is necessary in the Request for Information, or RFI, stage. There are three documents within the AVCDL document set that support the creation of the AVC MDS. These are the Autonomous Vehicle Cybersecurity Manufacturer's Disclosure Statement, Secondary Document, the blog post, AVC MDS, Autonomous Vehicle Cybersecurity Manufacturer Disclosure Statement, and the Manufacturer Disclosure Statement for Autonomous Vehicle Cybersecurity AVC MDS template. Here you can see the relationship between the various AVCDL documents covering the AVC MDS. We can see that the AVC MDS worksheet template is used to create the Supplier Cybersecurity Disclosure Statement, a specific instance of the AVC MDS template. The dotted line surrounding those two documents is used to indicate that both the Autonomous Vehicle Cybersecurity Manufacturer Disclosure Statement Secondary Document and the AVC MDS Autonomous Vehicle Cybersecurity Manufacturer Disclosure Statement blog post refer to both of those documents taken together. Here's the workflow used to create the supplier's AVC MDS. This diagram is taken from the AVC MDS secondary document. As you can see, there are two activities that take place, the practices assessment and the worksheet review. In the practices assessment activity, the supplier's cybersecurity SME uses the supplier's cybersecurity practices to complete the AVC MDS worksheet template. This results in the creation of an AVC MDS worksheet draft specific to the supplier. This draft is then reviewed by the customer's cybersecurity SME. Any deficiencies found are fed back to the supplier to create an update of the draft. Once it's determined that there are no deficiencies, the worksheet is considered to be final and is entered into the customer's document tracking system. Now let's go over some general information that you'll need in order to fill out the AVC MDS worksheet. The first section of the worksheet to be completed is the base information. This section is labeled documentation or doc. It contains seven items, the manufacturer's name, the device description, the device model, the document ID, the manufacturer contact information, the intended use of the device in a network connected environment, and the document release date. It's important to note here that the AVC MDS is relevant to a specific device or product being provided by the supplier to the customer. This is why we see the reference to a specific device description and model, as well as the corresponding device ID and release date. The base information is used to populate the summary at the top of the worksheet. As you can see here, all of the fields in yellow are transferred automatically to the fields in green. These fields should not be modified as they are autofilled. The AVC MDS worksheet covers 24 topics. They're listed here. 
rather than reading them off, I'll leave them on screen for a bit and give you some time to look at them. Each question is provided on its own line, and each line has five columns associated with it. These columns include the ID, which is unique to the question and the section, the question itself, the answer, a note, and an explanation, should one be necessary. Aside from the base information whose answers are in the form of text strings, all of the other questions are answered via dropdowns. As you can see here, we have the options of yes, no, not applicable, and see notes. A default answer has been provided for each of the questions. The hope is that these will represent a typical state of affairs and that any deviations should be noteworthy. When an answer requires a qualification, a note should be used. As seen here, this particular question references note 6. The answer is a yes, but a qualified yes. In the rare case when a note will not suffice to add clarity to an answer, the explanation field should be used. The explanation should be long-form text providing enough background so that the customer can evaluate the supplier's rationale. An important note, the AVCMDS is an as-is assessment. It's about what the supplier is doing today. Any question where the supplier reports that they have a process or do an activity should be verifiable. Suppliers should be informed that their answers are subject to requests for evidence. All AVCDL material, both in source and distribution forms, are available on our GitHub site, as shown here. Because of the size of the repository, it's recommended that you either clone the repository or download a zip archive of it if you're not familiar with using Git. Instructions for downloading a zip archive are linked to on the repository's front page. The next step in this training sequence is to complete the other two courses at this level if you haven't already. The supplier maturity training covers how a supplier self-reports the maturity of their processes in the context of the AVCDL. The vendor process mapping training covers how to take established vendor processes and map them to the corresponding AVCDL processes. This helps to ensure that no gaps will exist between the vendor and the customer in the area of cybersecurity. Once the three trainings at this level are complete, you should proceed to the security requirements training. Here are references to the source material used in the creation of this presentation. They'll also be included in the video description. Additionally, this presentation's source material will be provided on the AVCDL GitHub repository. The image of sailors playing Battleship is a publicly available image from the United States government.